Today we're looking at three full-sized SUVs head-to-head, -head, specifically the Chevy Tahoe, Jeep Wagoneer, and the Toyota Sequoia. They're marketed as large, roomy off-roaders, but today I'll tell you the truth about why they're gas guzzlers, unreliable, and nowhere worth their high price tags. And stick around the end to hear which vehicle offers a far better value than these SUVs in terms of cabin and cargo space at just a fraction of the price. The answer may surprise you. Let's start with the 2023 Jeep Wagoneer. Not many people know this, but the last few decades, various versions of the Wagoneer have been made in the U.S. since 1963. That's 60 years ago. The 2023 model is a full-size SUV, coming with an 8-speed automatic transmission, a 3-liter twin-turbo inline-six engine that pumps out up to 420 horsepower and up to 468 pound-feet of torque. Compare that to the Chevy Tahoe, the Wagoneer usually comes out top overall, especially when it comes to third row seating. In the 2023 Wagoneer, the third row seating comes with a nice electric assist that moves the seats forward to free up space. Because of the glass roof in the back, sunlight can reach even the furthest seats and the kids won't feel like they're locked in a cramped dungeon. The third row seats also come with AC vents, USB and USB-C ports, and cup holders. In the Chevy Tahoe, the third row seating is a different story. I'll get more into the details later in the video. The 2023 Jeep Wagoneer was ranked number one in driver appeal among large SUVs. It also ranked number one in residual value. If you're wondering, why on earth is this SUV in this video? Well, here's the thing. When you think of a full-size SUV, you think of things like off-roading, powerful towing, and other utilitarian features. And it's true, many full-size SUVs live up to these descriptions. But there are some key downsides that many people don't talk about. Take pricing, for example. Don't even get me started about how overall price this full-size SUV is. The 2023 Jeep Wagoneer starts at an MSRP of $61,595. Bump that up to the Series 3 trim, and you see a base price of $72,845, not including any add-ons. With starting prices like that, I'm expecting vehicles, stats, and specs to match. But the 2023 Jeep Wagoneer just doesn't live up to its price tag. Being overpriced isn't the only problem with the Wagoneer. There have been many reports of owners experiencing issues with this model. One owner even reported issues with their Wagoneer after just 64 miles. With this specific owner, the issue had to do with an error message on the display saying to check both second row seat latches before driving. The seats of the 2023 Wagoneer come with mechanical and electrical latches. The problem is the electrical latches can malfunction as it did in this particular owner. When that happens, the seat latch error message will pop up anytime the vehicle stop. The only way to fix this is to get the latches undone, which means a trip to the dealer. Another issue has to do with the quality of the materials of the interior. Several owners have complained that the leather along the top of the third row seats is pulling away from the backing seams. Believe it or not, this is actually a more commonly reported problem with the Wagoneer than you might think. I don't know about you, but I'm paying 80 grand for my full-size SUV. I prefer the seats to stay in one piece. Other reported issues include things like the steering column, power assist adjustment, and pedal adjustment that stop working. This is a relatively recent issue that Jeep is only recently becoming aware of. So if you own a 2023 Wagoneer and this happens to you, contact Jeep. Out of all these issues, the next one might be the worst of them all. Fuel economy. In one test, the 2023 Wagoneer received a ranking of 1 out of 5 for fuel economy ratings. I'm talking 14 in the city and 20 on the highway with the inline 6. If you get the V8, it goes down to 13 in the city and 18 on the highway. The Wagoneer also scored low, 3 out of 10 in fact, for greenhouse gas emissions. Next up is 2022 Chevy Tahoe. This is a vehicle that's been around since 1994, so we're talking almost 30 years here. Back in 2021, the Chevy Tahoe sold over 106,000 units, making it one of the most popular SUVs here in the United States, and it often outsells its competition by 2 to 1. The 2023 model offers three engine choices. It comes standard with a 5.3 liter V8 mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. You do have an option for the 3 liter Duramax turbo diesel engine. And with the higher trims, you can opt out for the 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 V8 engine that outputs up to 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. Admittedly, the Tahoe offers a light and smooth ride. But the thing is, to get that premium driving feeling, the Tahoe needs premium fuel. Without it, the ride doesn't feel the same. And don't be too surprised to hear that the Tahoe gets 15 miles a gallon in the city and 20 on the highway. It's going to guzzle a lot of expensive premium gas. 
Now, the standard version can seat up to eight passengers, but the Tahoe can be equipped with a front row bench to seat nine. The Chevy Tahoe outbeats the Toyota Sequoia in terms of cabin space. It can also tow more, between 8,100 and 8,400 pounds, depending on the engine option. The starting MSRP for the base Chevy Tahoe is $54,200. Honestly, it's not as high as some of its competitors, but with extra features, the SUV can easily go to the seventy dollars to 80000 price range. The high country trim, for example, starts at $74,395 before add-ons. If you're serious about off-roading, I'll tell you right off the bat, it's not as good off-roading as some of its competitors. I guarantee you, you can find cheaper vehicles that'll give you a better off-roading experience and better torque. Also, when you're behind the wheel of an SUV that's higher up in the price range like the Tahoe, it's going to require higher priced fuel to match. Fill it up with premium fuel and you'll get more power and better drive, but that comes at a higher cost. That's not even the worst part. But now let's talk about the 2023 Toyota Sequoia. The 2023 Sequoia is available exclusively as a hybrid. We're talking a twin turbo V6 with an electric motor generator that can be found in a housing between the engine and the 10 speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 437 horsepower and 583 pound feet of torque, which is impressive. The newest Toyota Sequoia kicks off a new generation Sequoia, the second generation to be exact. But it also replaces the Toyota Land Cruiser, which Toyota no longer sells here in North America. Since it's a hybrid, you'll get a far better fuel efficiency with the Sequoia than you would with the Jeep Wagoneer or Chevy Tahoe. You're looking at 21 miles a gallon in the city and 24 on the highway. Now, the grills on both the Toyota Sequoia and the Chevy Tahoe are punctuated by full LED headlights, but only the Sequoia has premium sequential turn signals and LED fog lamps. That said, the Chevy Tahoe comes out on top in other areas, like smart entry systems, for example. True, both vehicles have the ability for remote start, but the thing is, the Toyota Sequoia requires you to have a remote service subscription if you want to keep the remote start feature after the trial period ends, but the Chevy Tahoe doesn't. But here's the thing. As with all full-size SUVs, the Toyota Sequoia is too overpriced. The starting MSRP of the 2023 Sequoia is almost 60 grand, or $59,865 to be exact. But when you look inside the Sequoia, you see that the interior doesn't live up to the price tag. The soft touch material feels hard, almost like vinyl, because of all the plastic around it. Some owners even reported that their second row seats rattle, and as it turns out, the Bolton plastic cover that holds the bottom of the seat belt near the door sill between the seat cushion and sidewall rattles and knocks like crazy. Don't get me wrong, the Sequoia is a solid vehicle, but the thing is, it feels cheap. That's why I can't say the price is justified. But just look at the mirrors. Some critics liken the mirrors to moose antlers. Because of the positioning of the mirrors, there's an awkward blind spot that makes it harder for you to see any approaching cars. Now, the SUV does come with blind spot monitoring, so you're not completely at a loss. But still, the full-size SUV would look much more stylish and offer a more pleasant driving experience if the mirrors were designed differently. Now, the Toyota Sequoia offers less cabin and cargo spaces than a Chevy Tahoe. You can blame the Sequoia's hybrid battery pack, which sits below the second row seat. Because of the packaging, the second row doesn't slide. In fact, another reason why the Sequoia isn't worth the price is how the second row seats fold. Generally, to get a third row, you pull a little lever, which opens the space for you to slide into the third row. Problem starts once you throw something like a car seat in the mix, which is something you commonly see in a family-sized vehicle like this. With the car seat in the way, to get to the third row seating, you have to either go in from the other side or crawl over it, then walk through the center pass-through area. Now, I know this isn't the end of the world, but for a vehicle that reaches up to the $80,000 range, you'd expect expect much less of a hassle. Also, if you don't like chrome, you might want to look away from the 2023 Sequoia. It's full of it. I'm talking chrome on the grill, chrome on the hood, chrome on the front bumper. Don't forget chrome on the wheels, mirrors, door handles, window treatments, the lower door runner, roof rails, and even on the Sequoia lettering on the tailgate and rear bumper. It's like a chrome explosion. Anyway, if you're entertaining the thought of getting any of these full-size SUVs, well, it's pretty simple and it all boils down to this. Don't. It's just not worth it. Sure, they might look hip and trendy, but they depreciate quickly. Plus, if you're not a regular off-roader and your real need is a cabin and cargo space, then you don't want to lie to yourself. The truth is, it's better to get a minivan. You're not going to take either of them off-road anyway.
Now, not everyone realizes this, but minivans are generally a much better deal than full-size SUVs. They offer ample cabin and cargo space, and they're way cheaper and more reliable. Minivans have low floors and deep cargo wells behind the third row. That means even a full load of passengers you can still fit groceries, strollers, suitcases, and other gear inside. As a benchmark, just look at the Toyota Sienna. Starting price for a base 2023 model is $36,885, which is just a fraction of what you'd pay for a full-size SUV. An added bonus is that minivans typically save you money on car insurance. There are a few reasons why. First of all, minivans typically aren't in that many accidents. Chances are your average minivan driver is usually a bit more cautious on the road compared to other drivers. That usually comes down to the fact there's children in the back. It's also because the average minivan driver is older and more experienced compared to other drivers on the road. Also, vehicle theft and vandalism are uncommon with minivans. Minivans usually aren't the first vehicle choice for the average car thief, and that translates into low insurance claims risks. Minivans also have high safety ratings, which translates to lower car insurance premiums. And finally, minivans are a common mainstream vehicles, so if you later need repair work, then parts and supplies are typically easier to procure and cheaper. So you can expect parts replacement costs to be lower compared to full-size SUVs. But now you tell me, what do you think about the Jeep Wagoneer, Chevy Tahoe, or Toyota Sequoia? Have you driven any of these? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.